All right, in this short video, we are going to look at quadratic polynomials presented in standard form with the ultimate goal of being able to identify the coefficients a, b, and c. The ultimate goal is to be able to use a, b, and c in order to evaluate the quadratic formula, which we'll be using to solve quadratic equations. So first, let's just Notice that a quadratic polynomial is in standard form if it's written in the form ax squared plus bx plus c. We can't have a being 0, and of course a, b, and c all have to be real numbers. So the, the, the key takeaway is that the, the powers descend, right? So the highest power comes first, that's the squared term, then the linear term, the x to the 1 power, followed by the constant term. If it's in that form, then it is in standard form. Here are some examples of quadratics that are in standard form and those that aren't. So the ones on the left all are in standard form. And even though it looks like some of them have um, fewer terms and don't quite resemble what we saw above, the fact of the matter is we can identify our a, b, and c readily from the ones on the left, whereas the ones on the right, which are not in standard form, make it more difficult. So in the following exercises, we're going to start with the ones that look like uh, the column on the left, the ones that are in standard form, and then we'll move on to a few that are not in standard form. So this says, for the following quadratics in the form ax squared plus bx plus c, identify the values of a, b, and c. So again, these are all in standard form, and we are going to need an a value, a b value, and a c value. So the a value in this case is clearly a 9. The b value is clearly a 2. And the c value, so that symbol there in math can be thought of as subtraction but or a negative. In this case, it would be appropriate to think of this as plus negative 6 so that it matches the form up here. And we can see that c is, in fact, negative 6. So I have my a, b, and my c. So that one was pretty straightforward. Let's look at the second one here. The first thing I notice is that this only has two terms. So that does not mean that one of the terms doesn't exist. What it means is that, for, in, for instance, in this case, we see no constant term. That just means I could think of it as plus 0. The other thing to notice is I see negative x squared. Remember, that means that our a value is negative 1. So I'm kind of squeezing a negative 1 there. And now I can see that my a is negative 1. My b is a 5. And my c is a 0. Let's look at one more that's a little different. Again, this has two terms. And I've got an x squared term. I've got a constant term. What I don't have is that middle term with the x. Okay, the linear term. But that just means I can imagine that there was a 0 there that canceled it. So I'm going to write this as x squared over 5 plus 0x plus 2. And not only that, I'm going to think of x squared over 5 as 1 fifth times x squared because those are equivalent. And that allows me to see my a value more clearly. So now I can tell that a is 1 fifth b is 0, and c is 2. So these examples were somewhat straightforward because our quadratics are all presented in standard form. Let's look at a couple where that's not the case. So we have two things to do here. First is to write it in the form uh, ax squared plus bx plus c, and then we identify the values of a, b, and c. And so the thing to focus on is that it's not the order of the terms that um, determines what's a, b, and c. It's the numbers in front of the expressions with the powers. So what I mean by that is um, the a will always be in front of the uh, x squared term. The b will always be in front of the x term. And the c will always be the constant term. So we identify our squared term and write it first. So I can see my squared term is 1 third x squared. So I'm going to write that first. 
my x term is here, the plus x. So I'm going to write that second. And then my constant term is the 9. So this was almost written in like rev the rev complete reverse of standard form. But now I can identify my a, my b, and my c. So my a is clearly a third. My b is a 1. And my c is that 9. Let's try this one here. Again, there's only two terms. What I notice that's missing is that linear term, the term in front of the x. So that just means that there's a 0 as a coefficient there. The squared term should come first. I want to think of that negative as being part of the 12. So let's think of this as plus negative 12. And then we rewrite it as negative 12x squared. Again, there's no linear term, so I'm going to put plus 0x. And then the constant at the end, plus 7. Now it's in standard form, and I can see that my a is negative 12, my b is 0, and my c is 7. And let's finish with this example here. This also has two terms, and I notice that my constant term is missing. So that just means my constant term is a 0. We start with the highest power, that's the 12x squared. So I write 12x squared. Again, I'm going to think of that negative x over 5 as plus negative 1 fifth x. That is equivalent to negative x over 5. And again, my constant term is missing. That just means it's really 0. And so writing it like this allows me to see that my a is a 12. My b is a negative a fifth. And my c is a 0. All right, so this skill is important. It's going to be important for us when we solve quadratic equations and use the quadratic formula. And so hopefully these examples will allow you to be successful on practice problems.